What's up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Lots to talk about in today's video. All right, the US dollar and treasury rates are what's really impacting the market right now. And we've got to take a look at those, right? So if those continue to rise and those continue to break out and push further, it's very possible we could see the market come down. So that's what we really need to pay attention to over the next coming weeks, uh, heading into, you know, all of the data that we're really about to get it. We're getting tons of data and then we're going to have the next Fed meeting very shortly. So let's break it down in today's video and get straight into it. Now, we are going to take a look at TLT and break down TLT as well as, you know, what I'm looking at in the S&P 500, as well as, you know, treasury yields and the U.S. dollar. If we were to just take off some of these drawings real quick uh, and just simply use, you know, some very basic things here. We have our Bollinger Bands. And we have the five-day moving average, right? Now, uh, what I want to highlight is all of the times previously where we were in downtrends and we came back and retested the middle Bollinger Bands. You can see countless times, um, you know, we actually ended up continuing that downtrend. Um, and, you know, that's what we need to pay attention to here, right? Price action is squeezing a lot. If we were to zoom in a little bit more and take a look at this, um, we can see here that TLT is really squeezing a lot now currently at the moment, right? We're trading in between that five-day moving average. Just below that five-day moving average, there's a gap right here. These gaps, they tend to fill about 90% of the time historically. So the big question is when these gaps are going to fill, not so much if they're going to fill. So if we can get above our middle Bollinger Band here, which is going to be roughly 95.50, all right, that's also our previous highs over here. Then we could see some continuation to the upside towards the top Bollinger Band, which is going to be right around 99. Uh, but we need to be cautious of all of the other times where we simply danced above that Bollinger Band and then got back below the five-day moving average and continued the downtrend. Uh, there's been many times where uh, that's happened on TLT. Now, another thing I want to highlight here um, that could be a good bullish signal, okay, um, you know, is going to be your daily MACD right here. You see this bullish crossover where the white line crosses above. Uh, this has been a good trading signal, right? And if you take a look, uh, it happened right here. And we've, you know, seen a little bit of um, consolidation sideways. Uh, this could be, you know, very simply put, a bull flag, right? And we'd be looking for a breakout again up towards that $99 region. If you take a look at the last MACD crossover over here, we had a nice little bit of upwards momentum. MACD crossover here, nice little bit of uh, upwards momentum. And it's been a really good trading signal, um, <clears throat> you know, really for, you know, almost the past two years now. Um, you know, you see a MACD crossover here, and then we get a nice push to the upside, MACD crossover here. Nice push to the upside. Uh, and, you know, it's been something that I've been using a lot to help me uh, navigating the fields. Now, we'll go ahead and throw some drawings on here and go into the specific levels, right? Um, you know, we're, we're, we talked about price action squeezing between the five day moving average and also the, um, you know, middle Bollinger band. But if we take a look and we put our monthly anchored VWAP here, uh, that's what this yellow line is. And then our weekly anchored VWAP here, you can see we're even squeezing a little bit more. So we're about to get an explosive move. Uh, the reason this is so important is because large institutions, uh, they buy and sell at the average volume weighted price. And, you know, being that we squeeze between the weekly and the monthly, um, you know, we're going to see basically next week, you know, what big institutions are doing. Are they coming in here and selling um, or are they potentially buying back up and going to push it back up towards the quarter today anchored VWAP, which puts us up at the gap fill here at 9788. This is going to be your quarterly anchored VWAP right here. And so maybe, you know, buyers want to push in and step this up towards the quarterly anchored VWAP. And above there, we have our yearly anchored VWAP at about 102.4. Now, there's two gaps up uh, very close, and then there's one gap down. These are the three most important gaps, um, you know, again, just to highlight why these gaps are so important. You know, uh, it was very tempting to go along the TLT at all these moments when we were trading up above. Uh, we'll take off some of this stuff and make our charts a little bit clearer here. Uh, but TLT had this gap down to 95 all the way back from November. And so, um, you know, it took a lot of patience, you know, to wait for TLT to come down to this area. Uh, and now it finally has come down to this area. So we'll see if we're going to get, you know, buyers to step in and continue to push this up higher. All right, uh, 96.35, 96.65 is going to be our next resistance levels above our, uh, you know, middle Bollinger Band and our uh, monthly anchored VWAP. 
All right, if we can get above there, then we have the two gaps up that I mentioned, 97 and, you know, basically 97, 88, and we have one here at 99.55. Uh, so those are going to be two areas of interest to the upside and to the downside. We have our gap fill down below, uh, and then we've also got support at 93.22 and 92.30. If we break below 92.30, uh, it's very possible that TLT is going to actually go into uh, price exploration and break through our previous lows here. Um, now, let's talk about the 10-year, okay? Let's get into some of these treasury yields. If we take a look at the U.S. 10-year, breaking out, and what I want to do is just use some line charts here and make this very simple for you guys. So you, it, it's simple to see, simple to understand, uh, and you know we just want to try to make things as simple as possible for you guys to understand. So if we zoom out here and just take a look at this key level here, which is 4.25 on the 10-year treasury. Look at what it was, right? It was prior support over here. We ended up flipping that to resistance over here back in May of 2008. And then we retested that level here in October. All right. And now what are we doing? We're potentially trying to break out yet again. So key support turns to new resistance twice. Is this going to be another rejection? And we see yields start to go down lower or potentially if inflation starts to pick back up, it's very possible that yields continue to rise. Now, inflation is not the only factor here anymore. We have Janet Yellen printing massive amounts of treasury bills. Uh, we also have the Bank of Japan uh, you know, selling massive amounts of treasuries. Um, and then we have, you know, China also selling massive amounts of treasuries. So even though there's been massive inflows into bond ETFs this year, and if you look that data up, you know, we're seeing record amounts of inflows into bond ETFs, uh, but there's so much printing going on from uh, from Yellen really just uh, flooding, uh, you know, the bond market and the treasury market with, you know, basically a trillion dollars worth of treasuries. Uh, and then you add to that the pressures of, you know, China and Japan selling massive amounts. This is really what's driving yields up higher. Um, I mean, inflation has some part to do with it. The Fed has some part to do with it. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, people don't see the Fed fund rate going up another 100 basis points, right? Maybe there's another rate hike or two at 25 basis points, but ultimately they think that the Fed is going to pause sometime soon, but yields are still breaking out. And it's for the reasons that I gave you guys, right? That's the 20 year right here. Uh, let's look at the 30 year. This is when a really popular one of, uh, you know, uh, a popular topic of discussion right now, especially with Bill Ackman shorting uh 30 year treasuries and we can see that we've broken a clear long term downtrend right i mean this is from 1999 basically the entire 2000s um you know era it has been in this you know secular downtrend and we've seen a clear breakout here um you know we're trading above this critical level that used to be support right prior support prior support support you know and then ultimately we break down through this area that's at 4.2 right? The uh, 30 years at 4.288 right now. If this thing wants to continue going higher, it's very possible it heads up to the 4.8 area, right? That's also an area of key support in the past. And then we flip that area to resistance right around that 4.75 to 4.8 area. Now there's going to be some levels, of course, in between here, but ultimately over the long term, if the yields are going to continue rising, uh, the 30 year very may well head to the 4.75 and 4.8. And this is going to put pressure on the equity markets, right? Um, let's take a look at the dollar here and go into um, the U.S. dollar and break that. So here we have the dollar and we're looking at the daily time frame. And I mean, look at this massive V-shaped recovery that I had, right? Um, now, it, it actually played out perfectly a pattern known as the inverse bump and run. Uh, if you guys have been fans of the channel, been watching the channel, this is a one of my favorite patterns that I've been, uh, you know, trading over the last like six months is, you know, you see this clear trend, right? And in this case, it's a downtrend. Then you have this aggressive bump in the price down. And when you break these trend lines and you, and, and you have this chart pattern setting up, I mean, you're supposed to break through both of the trend lines and it's going to take you back up to where the pattern began. Uh, that's 100% retracement right around the 104.718 area. And what did we do, right? We pulled up. We had the breakout and then we retraced and bounced off of our 61.8% retracement level, continued up higher, broke through our 61.8% retracement level of resistance, which was 102.757. And now we're pushing up higher for that 100% retracement. Um, you know, not only that, we talked about the daily MACD being a really good signal. You know, we see the MACD crossover here, right? So we see the break of the trend line. We're watching the chart pattern, right? And this is how you guys should, you know, set up trades, right? And these are things that you want to look at. You want to look for multiple signals, right? You don't want to look for, um, you know, just one signal. You don't want to look just for two signals. You want to try to, you know, 
use as many things as you can, right? And so if we're just going with some of the most simple, right, we're using the MACD, we're using the RSI. And what do we see here? Well, we see that the RSI went oversold, started to form a bullish divergence, right? Meaning that the, you know, RSI is going up here, uh, while the price action is not really going up, right? Uh, you see in this area is making lower lows. These are wicks, but, you know, ultimately price was still going lower here, hit that oversold territory. And what do we see next? We see we have the MACD crossover here. And on top of that, we have our chart pattern with the inverse bump and run pattern, right? And if you missed the initial breakout, right, and, and, and you, you know, you're looking for a breakout retest, um, this is your breakout here, right? And then what do we do? We retrace to the 61.8% retracement level of support. This is your entry zone here, and you ride that momentum up. And it, look at exactly where we start to find resistance, our 61.8% retracement level of, um, you know, resistance, right, from the move up to the move down. All right. It's not a coincidence that also lines up with the trend line here and you start to see some resistance. And what do we do? We end up breaking through there, right? Flipping that area of prior resistance now to new support. And we're pushing up higher for that 100 percent retracement. Now we are approaching overbought territory, right? We're overbought currently at the moment. The MACD is very close to getting a crossover to the downside. These are going to be some of the signals you want to look for. Um, to potentially see the dollar start to move down, right? And maybe look for any type of bearish divergences forming here. Uh, but this doesn't mean that, you know, the US dollar is about to crash, right? It's very possible we get this move up to 104.78 after some healthy consolidation here. And these are things that we need to pay attention to and watch because they're going to be driving the market, right? When we take a look at the S&P 500, um, and, you know, you can see here on the daily, we have pretty much a head and shoulders pattern forming. I'm sure lots of people are, uh, you know, uh, talking about this here on social media. We'll actually zoom in on the one hour time frame here uh, in, in just a minute. But, you know, you have a clear left shoulder here. You have a head. You have a clear right shoulder here. Um, but on a smaller time frame, and, and, and this is just a uh, retracement that I'm looking at here. This is a potential scenario. All right. After completing um, our wave three up with a five wave structure. All right. Um, you know, just to kind of give you guys a quick breakdown of some of the Elliott wave. You know, we had our five wave move here. One, two, three, four, five. And after that five wave move, you should be getting an ABC move to the downside. Um, now, again, this doesn't have to play out. This could have been our correction here when we hit these lows around 433. Um, but what I'm tracking in the count that I'm tracking, you know, your A wave should be a five wave structure and your B wave should be a ABC structure. And then your C wave should be another five wave structure. So if we zoom in a little bit and, and try to break this down, all right, we can see here um, a little bit clearer what it is that I'm looking at, right? And so these are some of the things that I'm paying attention to right now, you know, with yields, you know, um, you know, soaring right now and the dollar soaring, uh, it's very possible that if that continues, that we're going to get this correction to the downside, right? So we have our wave one down, two up, three down, four, and then here's our five. After we completed our five, which is our A wave target, then we got an ABC correction to the upside. Uh, and now we're looking to see a one, two, three, four, five again down to give us uh, the bottom of our C wave. Now, again, this is just something I'm tracking. It can be invalidated at any point. Uh, but when you take into account seasonality, um, September is historically, you know, one of the worst months for the stock market. And when you take a look at pre-election data and you take a look at pre-election year or um yeah, pre-election years, uh, September, you usually see a pullback in September, right? And so we may trade sideways, we may consolidate, but if, you know, the middle of September, we start to see that pullback middle towards end of September, um, you know, that's going to complete our, ultimately our C wave down. And when we look at our one hour chart here, what do we see on the one hour? Well, we've got a left shoulder head and right shoulder here as well, right? With this important level of 441.34 being respected as resistance here and here again, but still maintaining our support level here at 43.950. Uh, or 439.50. Um, so, you know, these are a lot of the things that I'm watching right now. Uh, it's very tough to navigate the markets, but you need to be paying attention to, you know, the right things. And, and, and in my opinion, these are the things that you do want to be paying attention to right now. And um, I do want to shout out real quick the newsletter, right? I started a completely free newsletter for you guys. Uh, it's really great, valuable content, and it's it's different stuff than I'm putting on YouTube as well, right? Some of the stuff, are, uh, you know, that I put out here on YouTube will show up 
in the newsletter, um, but oftentimes it's it's other different things, right? And you know, this is um, you know one of the posts here about you know Jackson Hole. Um, and you can get this info, you know, sent straight to your inbox. And in this, we were talking already about the rise in treasury yields and the 30 year, 10 year spread. This is an important, um, you know, spread right here, right? For those unfamiliar, the 30, 10 year treasury spread yield represents the difference between the 30 year treasury rate and the 10 year treasury rate. A spread that approaches zero indicates a flattening yield curve. If the spread goes negative, it can signal a flight to safety, often indicating a lack of confidence in the strength of the economy, right? And if we were to just go back over here to trading view real quick, all right, and we'll go to like a daily or a weekly time frame, um, and we'll look this up right here, right? 30 year uh, minus US 10 year. And we'll make this a nice little line chart so you guys can see, right? And zoom out here. And what do we see? You know, this blue line is the zero. We're uh, making that approach, right? This has really started plummeting here um, since August has began. And August hasn't been a good month for the stock market. So, you know, we need to pay attention to this 30, 10 year spread because uh, the more this approaches zero, um, you know, basically, you know, the the worse the outlook is for the economy. Uh, and, you know, that's what the bond market is pricing in. Uh, so this is another type of spread and thing that you want to pay attention to. Uh, remember, this was, you know, included in the uh, newsletter. All right. There's a link in the description or a comment section down below. And you guys can sign up for it completely free uh, and get those, you know, emails sent strictly to or straight to your inbox. Now, another thing um, that I want to highlight is kind of like the uh, relationship between the dollar and the VIX. Right. A lot of people know the VIX as kind of like the fear index. Uh, it's the volatility index. You know, and if we were to take a look here um, and uh, go ahead and hide some drawings real quick, go back to some candles right here. Just zoom in. Whenever you get these upticks in the VIX, you also start to see these upticks here in uh, in the dollar, in the U.S. dollar. So those are the things that I'm paying attention to right now. Um, so to come back full circle, right, we have TLT here. And what you need to pay attention to is the move, right? This is your bond market volatility index, basically. This is like the bond market's version of the VIX. And what we see here is whenever you get these massive spikes in the move, that's when you start to see these moves down in TLT. And then you get that compression, right? You get compression, consolidation, and then another big spike. That's when you see the TLT dropping. Uh, and then, you know, you get that compression afterwards and then boom, you see another big spike. So it's no surprise we've seen the compression here and the move down. All right, if this starts to consolidate sideways, you need to be cautious of a move up to the upside. Now, what's really amazing is that to me, I think at least, is that the VIX uh, in bond market volatility, um, <clears throat> you know, is actually higher than equity market volatility than the S&P 500, right? If you take a look, the move is above the VIX. And this has been a trend for, you know, the entire year, right? You can see going back all the way to the beginning of 2023, the bond market has been more volatile than the stock market, uh, which is not an environment that, you know, you typically see, right? This is something that, um, you know, kind of kind of really started happening, um, you know, towards 2022 and stuff. Uh, if we were to zoom out a little bit and just, you know, take a look at this, um, you know, you can get a better idea of what I mean. You know, you typically you see the VIX above the bond market volatility um, and above the move. Um, but, you know, here recently since 2022, that hasn't been the case, right? We've been seeing extremely elevated levels of, you know, bond market volatility. And if we were to just draw a simple horizontal line here, um, you know, and take a look at the previous highs that we had in bond market volatility. Um, that's kind of like where we've just been chilling above, right? We've been chilling above these levels on the move um, really since 2022 even started, right? And and what we're seeing is just elevated bond market volatility um, and staying at these highly elevated levels. And we haven't seen these levels in, you know, basically a decade. Um, so, you know, this actually provides really good trading opportunities. Um, you know, if you are uh, trading the bond market and, you know, I've been really enjoying a lot of this volatility being that I like to trade uh, TLT. Uh, it's provided a lot of nice opportunities. And I think that there are still many opportunities left ahead for us uh, to trade TLT and, um, you know, capitalize off of this bond market volatility uh, while it's still here. So I uh, appreciate y'all watching the video. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and I'm out.